E3D is changing the hot end game once again. Yes, it's been a long time since the V6 had a refresher. But this old V6, it's out of here. We're bringing in the Revo. Let's talk about it. Just released, like... 36 minutes ago just released for those of you that are like I bet they put a lot of effort into getting no no we find the information and we go hard in the paint 36 minutes ago the Revo was officially announced now all morning Mr. Michael Petch has been showing off some teasers well I mean it's, it's the real thing even bananas for scale come on people what more do you need? Bananas for scale. But we've got a all new hot end from E3D that is going to make burning your little fingies a thing of the past. Hopefully, probably not, because a lot of you aren't going to follow the instructions, but hopefully a thing of the past. Let's, I am so friggin' pumped for this. My headphones are going to fall off. I'm so darn pumped. I am pumped. And there's more. There's more. Uh, teaser. There's more coming. This is thing is awesome seriously there's a whole new cartridge system L let's go back to this image look at this guys look at this it is a heater and thermistor combo in a circular disc no more cartridge style heater where it's only really heating on the front side and not really else or on the back side depending on how you have it mounted this heats all the way around, thermistor all the way around, everything all the way around town. Bring it around town. And it looks like they're solving the deal with the hot end being a pain in the ass to service. Because those of you that own V6s or other hot ends, you recognize that if it's not generally like from Slice Engineering, you have to hold the heat block to take the nozzle out. No, 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 not anymore. There's a spring that now attaches it to the heatsink. And that enables you to have a little bit of wiggle. Nozzles that don't require any extra BS to take on and off. And they are color coded, which is really, really cool. Check this out, check this out. Freaking color coded so that you can easily at a glance know what you're dealing with. And look at this. You've got what is effectively a built-in heater block, a built-in heater brake, and now something to screw into your heat sink. There are three versions of the Revo at launch. The Revo Hermera, the Revo Micro, and the Revo 6, which, yes, a lot of you might be looking at and saying, that looks a lot like a V6. That's because it is. It is a lot like a V6. It uses the same groove mount as an E3D V6, so it is a drop in replacement yes that's right drop in freaking replacement and uh two others coming soon i have no clue what they are there are a lot of creators out there that are likely going to have all of this info we are not a part of the r d beta testing or partner program with e3d but any of you know sanjay i would love to get in that program because being able to have this pre-recorded would have been very very helpful the design is relatively simple and allows for one-handed changes, which is great because I've done it, and I'm sure a lot of you have done it too, where you grab the heater block with a pair of pliers and you break a wire, you mess up the block, you break something. I've shorted out heater wires, I've broken multiple thermistors doing this. So this kind of makes sense. They use a Hermera style interface so that you can utilize it directly with the Hermera without any additional pieces. Versus traditionally, you would have this part, then you would have to go to your heat block, heater, and all of that. This makes it so much easier. We see that nozzles are going to be a little bit expensive. Now, it is going to cost you significantly less than anything you'll find in the market of this quality. Basically, you're going to be comparing it to Slice Engineering. They're about the only ones that are playing in this kind of quality. And they're saying 120 US dollars, you not only get a full hot end, but also all four nozzles. That is stupid stupid cheap now okay let's say the hot end is the same price as the v6 65 dollars that means nozzles are gonna be something like what 
20 bucks, something around that range. They are making this incredibly affordable because they're able to really get this right. I love this idea. This new mounting system is gorgeous. They tested this out on some V6s. This is the, we kind of knew this new mount was coming, but this, this is cool. I don't know how I feel about the integrated heater and thermistor. I'm worried that if you break one, you kind of have to replace both, but will that make it more stable? I think the benefit of having that spring in there keeps your whole heat block from falling out if you accidentally let go of it for whatever reason. And that has another benefit in likely keeping it from breaking as often. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I really want to build a, uh, a Bowden printer with this Revo Micro and make it run just insane speeds. And you know what else has insane speeds? My segue to our sponsor, 3D Musketeers. This one's going to be a little bit different because we need your help. If you are someone that loves CAD, you love designing, you love making, and you love doing it for slightly under market value because it's tough to run a business these days. I know you can probably make more money going to work for Walmart, but then you have to work for Walmart. We are hiring here at 3D Musketeers, and I'd like to believe we have a pretty awesome team. We can card to the video where you can meet quite a few of them in our one-year podcast special. But if you want to join the 3D Musketeers team, email us, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. I would love to talk to you about this because we are actively hiring people to help you get your ideas out of your head and into your hands with full art part, rapid prototyping, and product development. Also, be on the lookout. We are running a giveaway all of October. We're going to be giving away a 3D printer on our Patreon. Details of this are going to be coming very soon. So if you want to get in, make sure you get ready because October 1st, all of this stuff is going to open up and we're going to start giving away a printer hopefully every single month because we want to put a printer into the hands of the community and entries will start as low as $1. Dollar, Yeah, you can win a 3D printer for a dollar. Come on. Anyways, back to the cool news. This is something that I want to point out. It is engineered in a way that makes it safe. The heater core is designed with a positive temperature coefficient, a PTC, that reduces power as it gets hotter, drastically reducing the maximum thermal runaway temperature and associated hazards. Hell yes. Absolutely awesome. I am so glad to see this. We've been talking about adding PTCs into heaters for years and nobody's done it. Why? Because cartridge-based heaters are cheap and they work. They're just crazy dangerous. And by the way, if you want to see what happens when a cartridge style heater goes nuclear, make sure you get subscribed because I should be filming that video pretty soon. We're, we're basically ready to go. And uh, we are going to put a printer into deliberate thermal runaway. It's going to be fun. And hey, while you're down there, leave a like. I love the custom color-coded silicone socks. I will be curious to see if you can get replacements, but theoretically, the way that this looks, Blob of Dooms should not be such a big deal anymore. There's not a big block for it to get wrapped around. It's considerably smaller. Now, I do look at this and say, if you're looking to build a belt printer where you really do need that fine point, this is not going to be the hot end for you. Straight up not going to be the hot end for you. And there's a lot that goes into this. Like, that's a non-trivial amount of machining. I'm really excited to get our hands on one. Hopefully we can get our hands on one relatively soon. We can also see that there is going to be a Hermera Micro of some sort. And we can actually see that they're teasing that in these photos here. And those of you that don't own a Hermera won't know that that is a considerably smaller stepper motor than it should be. But there you go. You can see it. Now I am going to pull judgment on this. I got a Titan Arrow way early in the game, back before they had their bearing gate, where all of the bearings were effectively seizing up on people. A lot of us replaced them with iGoose. E3D was awesome and sent everybody that had an issue with it replacement parts good on them for doing it, but I had one of these tiny little pancake motors on my Titan Arrow and it was just not enough. We ended up going to a much larger motor instead. 
Uh, technically, it was not on this hot end, but work with me. This is also a Titan Arrow. But does that mean the Titan Arrow is dead? Uh, I kind of feel like yes. I believe the Hermera is going to be the path that E3D is taking moving forward. And there's a lot of really awesome stuff here, right? Look at how tiny this is. Look at the banana for scale. These things are crazy tiny. Oh, the other thing I'm really worried about here is the fan. Like these fans already got pretty noisy over time. That is a little tiny fan. I am curious to see how it performs over time with noise. But look at this, a silicone sock for the nozzle, silicone sock for the heater block. Guys, they're solving a lot of the problems that we see right now. And again, thanks to Michael Petch. This is great. Look at those nozzles. Oh, so pretty. I love that wrapping. That's also going to deal with a lot of strain, right, on the wires themselves. Really, really cool. Oh, yeah. There's one more thing. The Obsidian Nozzle. From what we can tell, E3D is launching a whole slew of nozzles for the V6 system that are hardened steel internal, but copper external. So whether they're sleeving it, whether it's an alloy of some sort, we don't know yet, but we've got patents and this is really, really cool. I am excited to see particularly what comes out of these nozzles. I want to see how it ends up. Also, look at this. So simple, one-handed nozzle changing. That's freaking right. I mean, come on. Again, Michael Petch, you are the real MVP today. You are the real MVP. Thanks for being awesome with the 3D printing industry and bringing us all of this really cool stuff. So give him the credit that he deserves. According to beta testers, you also can change this nozzle totally cold. With that spring involved, it should remove that backlash that exists within the hot end, enabling you to change it when it's cold. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing because uh, leave a like if you've burned your hand or your fingers trying to change a nozzle. Like. I've done it many times, and this would be amazing to not have that problem anymore. This is awesome, though. With the Rapid Change family, I am excited to see what E3D comes out with. They're already clearly committing to two more nozzles, and we can see how much easier this whole system is. There are no screws. There's no grub screw. There's no clamp screw. There's no dealing with the aluminum. It is so much better. Is it going to hold up talking to beta testers that can now finally talk to me about these things? Yes, actually, it holds up incredibly well. So I'm excited to get my hands on it. 40 watt heater, 12 or 24 volts, 2X of the Molex MicroFit 3.0. Still not a fan of those connectors, but I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be just soldering wires direct onto it. Wire length off the heat block is actually pretty darn good, 100 and 120 millimeters. And it appears that they are also going to be color coded so you don't accidentally plug them into the wrong thing. I would like to see two different connectors. That way there is no way that someone could mess it up, but I feel like they're kind of relying on you to do just a little bit of thinking before you act. And if you don't do a little bit of thinking before you act, maybe you'll end up in a Print Fail Friday episode, which of course we will card to that playlist right there so you can take a look at it. I really like it. And as somebody that backed the Pico Hot End on Kickstarter, I know I don't like Kickstarters. I did back it and I did get some and I've yet to implement them. I am curious to see how a Pico Hot End will compare to this Revo Micro. Again, they're going over their patents and their IP. This is good. You want to make sure that you continue to drill this home. It is good that E3D is doing this. Slice Engineering, as pointed out by a commenter in our last video, has been doing this for a while, and Slice got a bit of flack from it. But I also believe it's because Slice didn't have a lot of market share before they started doing the patents, whereas E3D said, we don't have a sustainable business with open source, so we need to go with patents. Open source is not dead. 
The cold side interface is open source, so you can design mounting systems, fit on whatever printer, wherever, whenever you'd like. In fact, we encourage you to design your own heat sinks and mounting systems as long as you use the Revo nozzles and heater cores with it. Hey, I'm totally down for that, and I think that's great for manufacturers that want to integrate. Integration is how companies gain market share. If manufacturers say, you can't use our stuff, then printer OEMs are going to say, well, then we're going to go get crappy Creality style ones that suck. Like, there is nothing nice about this style of hot end. Seriously. The thermistor is just held in with capped on tape. You have a grub screw for your heater. And it's a PTFE lined heater. These are garbage. Get rid of them and upgrade to something better like the E3D Revo. And no, they're not paying me to say this, but they should. So if you know someone over at E3D, hi Sanjay, we'd love to talk. We're almost at 2,000 subs, we could have some fun here. And with pre-orders opening in November-ish, 2021, shipping by end of year, good Christmas delivery I think would be awesome for them, people that are getting 3D printers or that want to get upgrades for 3D printers. I feel like they've got a lot going on here. I love that they have a Revo 6 that is exactly the same overall dimensions as a V6 that uses that same style of groove mount and they're also adopting a brand new mounting system. All of this to me screams an absolute win for the E3D team. I want to know your opinions down in those comments below. I'm excited. I think a lot of you are too. This is going to kind of change the game. For a while, the industry has been stagnant. If it wasn't for Slice Engineering releasing new stuff and then companies knocking off Slice and then knocking off not Slice and some weird things that are going on there, I don't think we would be as excited about these kind of changes because the V6 just kind of worked. And yeah, it had its problems, but we just kind of dealt with it. This solves a lot of those big issues for me that the E3D V6 had. I know they call it the Revo. I kind of want to call it the V7. Anyways, guys, I am so excited for this. I hope you are too. Of course, let us know down in those comments once again. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. And don't, don't throw your hot ends unless you truly don't care about them. Please don't throw your hot ends. I, it, it's a bit for the video. <laughs> See you later. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I am so excited for the Revo and I hope you are too. Right below me is our anatomy of a hot end video, which clearly needs to be redone. And I'm excited for more content because this hot end is amazing. Right next to it is going to be the video all about E3D patents. And of course, next to me are all of our patrons. So if you wanna get your name on our videos, make sure you join our Patreon, patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers and pledge at least $5 and you will get your name in the credits of our videos. I'll see you guys down in the comments. Take care.